Are you sure you know who the British people really are? Most people think they do, but the truth is far stranger than anything you learned in school. Because when scientists pooled DNA from thousands of people across the UK, they found something nobody expected. And once you hear it, you'll never look at the British Isles the same way again. Most people learn the same story. Romans came, then left. Anglo-Saxons arrived, Vikings raided, Normans conquered. End of story. But the genetic map tells a very different version of history, one that shows who actually stayed, who mixed, and who barely left a trace at all. And some groups that were treated as invaders actually changed the DNA less than almost anyone imagined. So in this video, we're digging into what the genetic map of the British Isles really shows, how far the influence of the Romans, Saxons, Vikings, Normans, and early Celtic groups actually goes, and why one small area turned out to be the most genetically unique place in the entire region. And by the end, there's one discovery that flips the whole story of the islands completely upside down. Before we get into the details, let's start with the problem. The history of the British Isles has always been told through wars, invasions, kings, and battles. But people rarely ask the question that really matters. What happened to the people on the ground? Did each new wave replace the last? Did they mix? Did they push earlier groups into corners of the map? Or did everyone simply blend together until the whole region became one big genetic soup? For a long time, nobody had a clear answer. But then, the people of the British Isles study changed everything. Researchers collected DNA from volunteers all across the UK and Europe. They weren't looking at recent movement. They were trying to track population changes over the last 10,000 years. And when the data came in, they found something shocking. Instead of one smooth mixture, they found 17 clear genetic clusters across the British Isles. 17. And those clusters match geography almost perfectly. That means people in many parts of Britain have actually stayed in the same regions for hundreds, sometimes thousands of years. And each wave of migration left a different impact depending on where it landed. Some changed almost everything. Others barely left a mark. So let's break down what they found. Starting with a group most people think had one of the biggest impacts, the Anglo-Saxons. When the Romans left Britain around the early 400s AD, groups of Angles and Saxons began to move in from what is now Germany and Denmark. Many people assume they completely replaced the earlier population. That's the old story. They arrived, the old groups vanished, and modern English people came from them. But the DNA shows something else. Across much of eastern, central, and southern England, there is a strong Anglo-Saxon signal usually between 10 and 40 percent. That's a big impact, but it also means they didn't wipe out the earlier people. In fact, the earlier ancestry is still there. What really happened was mixing and slow integration. The Anglo-Saxons settled, lived among local groups, married into them, and formed new blended communities. So instead of a full takeover, it was more like a long merge that reshaped England without erasing the past. But when you move north and west, the picture shifts again. And this brings us to the Vikings, who people often imagine as a group that must have left a huge footprint everywhere they set foot. But the truth is more complicated. The Vikings had a massive effect on culture, words, place names, trade, and politics. But genetically? England barely shows a clear Viking signature from the Danelaw period. That doesn't mean they weren't there. It just means their numbers were too small to leave a strong mark on the DNA. But travel north to Orkney, and everything changes. Orkney turned out to be one of the most genetically unique places in the entire study. 25% of the DNA there comes from Norwegian ancestry, a quarter. That's a huge signal and it lines up perfectly with the history of heavy Norse settlement. But even there, the earlier population wasn't wiped out. The indigenous people, likely the Picts, still show up in the genes. 
So even in one of the strongest Viking zones, the story is still about mixing, not replacement. But what about the rest of Scotland, Northern Ireland, and Wales? In Scotland, Norwegian markers do show up, but not nearly as strongly as in Orkney. Northern Ireland shares some of those markers too, but when you go to Wales, the Viking footprint almost disappears. And this is where another big discovery appears. The people of Wales are the closest genetic match to the earliest settlers of the British Isles after the last ice age. When the ice sheets pulled back and the first groups moved in, they spread across all regions, but later migrations hit England, Scotland, and Northern Ireland far harder. Wales, especially its western regions, was much more sheltered. Because of that, Welsh people today carry some of the oldest genetic signatures in the whole of Britain and Ireland. But even in Wales, the data revealed something unexpected, a split between the North and the South. This wasn't simply one ancient group. Even there, movement and mixing shaped the land. Now let's talk about the Romans. The Romans changed Britain in almost every way you can imagine. Roads, towns, trade, law, religion, government, architecture, and the idea of Britain as a connected region. But genetically, their influence is surprisingly small. The study shows almost no large Roman genetic footprint. And the reason seems simple. Most Roman soldiers and officials never stayed long term, and even fewer settled permanently. Once the empire pulled back, most left with it. Their cultural impact lasted. Their DNA did not. The same story appears when we look at the Normans. The Norman conquest changed the ruling class, reshaped the language, and reorganized the entire structure of the country. But genetically, almost no major shift shows up outside a few elite families. The Norman influence was about power, not numbers. So if the Romans didn't leave much DNA, and the Normans didn't either, and the Vikings affected some places but not most, then what about the Celts? The study found that Celtic groups across the British Isles are indeed distinct, but not because they all come from the same ancient Celtic race. In fact, the term Celtic is mostly cultural. The different Celtic regions, Wales, Scotland, Ireland, are genetically different from one another. What links them is not a single shared ancestor, but shared language, culture, and historical interaction. One of the clearest examples of this interaction is the link between Western Scotland and Northern Ireland. This ties back to the Gaels and the old kingdom of Dal Riada, which stretched across the water between the two regions. So rather than being isolated, these areas were connected for centuries. But Northern Ireland also showed something else. Two distinct genetic groups. One links to Scotland, the other links to parts of England. This may reflect later historical events, including the Ulster Plantation, which brought new settlers into the region. Again, the DNA lines up with real history. There's another surprising migration the study uncovered. A large movement from northern France into Britain between 6,000 and 3,000 years ago. This migration came long before Romans, Saxons, Vikings, or any other group you usually hear about in history class. These early movements helped form the foundation on which later groups mixed. And because they happened so long ago, people often forget they existed. At this point, the picture becomes clear. The genetic map of the British Isles isn't a simple story of one group replacing another. It's a long timeline of layers, some thin, some thick, mixing in different ways depending on the region. Some groups changed culture but left almost no DNA. Others arrived in small numbers but affected the structure of society. And in a few places, like Orkney or Southern England, the genetic influence of certain groups stands out more clearly. But the most surprising discovery is this. People in many parts of the British Isles have deeper local roots than anyone expected. Some can trace their ancestry in the same region back over a thousand years through DNA alone. 
That goes against the old idea that the islands were constantly reset by wave after wave of new arrivals. The truth is that change came in layers, not replacements. And that leads us to the key moment in this story. The biggest genetic divide in the British Isles isn't between England and Scotland. It isn't between North and South. It isn't even between Celtic and non-Celtic regions. The deepest divide is actually between ancient populations that settled right after the Ice Age, long before the Romans, Saxons, Vikings, or any other group you usually hear about in history class. These early groups shaped the base layer of the genetic map, and everything else was built on top of them. It turns out the earliest settlers still influence the DNA of people today far more than most later invasions. The newer arrivals left impacts, but the ancient foundations never disappeared. And that changes our whole understanding of the story of the islands. So what does all this really mean? It means the British Isles were never shaped by a single wave of people. They were shaped by many groups, arriving at different times, mixing in different ways. It means culture and power changed much faster than DNA ever did. And it means the modern idea of British identity is built on thousands of years of movement, blending and survival, not a single clean origin. It also means we still don't know everything. New studies are coming out every year, and each one adds another layer to the story. As more ancient DNA is sequenced, more graves are studied, and more modern samples are compared, we'll get an even clearer picture of how people moved across these islands over time. But for now, the genetic map gives us something we didn't have before. A detailed, grounded look at how deep the roots of the British Isles really go, and how each group, from the earliest hunter-gatherers to the Anglo-Saxons to the Vikings, played a part in shaping the people who live there today. If you want to keep going, subscribe our channel.